In this lore series, we have explored the dastardly depths of decrepit dungeons, miasmic menacing meth houses, and treacherous terroristic tenets. Yet today, we will be exploring something different. Not the work of one psychotic man or the act of desperation by those clinging to something that will help them stay afloat. No, the people we'll be discussing today are well within their own minds. They're just, for lack of a better word, evil. Welcome to the Ready or Not Lore series, where in today's episode we will be discussing the mission Hide and Seek. As always, this video will be divided into two sections, the first being all in-game slash developer confirmed information, and the second being my own theories as to where the story may go in the future. SPD SWAT, the FBI hostage rescue team, and the ATF link up in a joint strike operation attempting to thwart a human trafficking ring operating out of Los Sueños' port Hoken. Entering said port, it appears to be business as usual. Shipping crates and trucks sit dormant all around, having either loaded or dropped off materials. Around the back of the port, near what appears to be a canal, there seems to have been some kind of accident recently, resulting in multiple shipping crates falling into the water. Entering the Void Shipping Services building through the back alley, we find a room with a bunch of yellow barrels and a desk with multiple papers. On the desk, we can find a Police Doggo's Training Manual by Clifford Cujo. Haha, <laughs> very, very funny. I get, I get it because they're both dogs. Anyway, we can also find a bunch of papers thrown about that are pretty hard to read, but one in particular stands out. It's a classified document discussing the USS Kitty Hawk for something about March 1st, 1972. The Kitty Hawk is an actual US supercarrier named after a town in North Carolina. The only thing I could find in regards to the Kitty Hawk in 1972 was on October 12th, 1972. The Kitty Hawk was en route to its station in the Gulf of Tonkin during the Vietnam War when a race riot between black and white sailors broke out. It involved more than 200 sailors and resulted in over 50 sailors being injured, but thankfully, no deaths. On the floor, we can find a folder with our beloved Francisco Laguna's name on it. Now here's the thing. As a lot of you have pointed out by now, the name Sergeant Francisco Laguna also appears in the game Scum, as also shown in this post from 2019. This could mean two possible things. Number one, Ready or not, and Scum are in the same universe, and the reality show that pits prisoners against one another in Scum is being funded by the USIA, and we, as the LSPD SWAT, are actually a part of that system, as the people we arrest are not actually going to prison and are, in fact, going to the island Scum is set on. Therefore, the people we arrest in Ready or Not are actually our player characters in the game Scum, creating a never-ending loop of pain and misery. Or number two, both dev teams used the same asset pack from the Unity Store. Nah, it's probably the first one, but if someone can get Mr. Ready or not to clarify if Francisco Laguna is simply an asset or official, that'd save me a headache and a half in speculation. Moving into the next room, we can find bathtubs on tarps with more of these yellow barrels and a cage with a set of handcuffs nearby. On the loading bay, we don't see much, so let's just move upstairs. In the upstairs office, graffiti and rot mark the walls as trash and debris cover the floors. Sitting open on the floor looks to be a book of poetry with two poems by Robert Louis Stevenson in his collection, A Child's Garden of Verses. Fun fact, Stevenson was also the guy who wrote Treasure Island. Anyway, we see two poems, In Port and Shadow March, both of which are parts belonging to the larger poem called Northwest Passage, and long story short, it's basically about a kid going to sleep. Looking at the corkboard on the wall, we see a ton of ads with two in particular standing out. Free puppy to good home, name Do Chicken. Age four, color black with white beard. Personality princess, this is my dog, so no, you really can't have it. Sorry for the inconvenience. And car for sale, asking $2,300. Here are some random details about a car that does not really exist. There is no car. This is only a picture of a car that does not exist anywhere in the real world. Do not ask me where the car is because it is not real. I do not own this car, nor have I ever seen this car. The person that owns this car may be asking money for it, but I am not asking money for it because I do not own this car in real life. Sorry to make you read all of this for no reason. LOL. You are still reading. What are you looking for? 1234 Court Street someplace northwest 23522. And to answer your question, Ad- ANSWERS! I'm looking for answers! Who the fuck 
is Francisco. Look, moving down the hall, we see some money on the floor and some books scattered around. However, looking on the wall, we see a couple of notes taped up saying, warehouse storage room PBR workflow, followed by a couple of black and white pictures, and also the Venus Project, beyond politics, poverty, and war. The last time we saw the Venus Project was back on the map, the spider. I was just spitballing what it was at first, but in the comments, it was pointed out by LaKibbs that it's actually a real thing. The Venus Project is a nonprofit organization founded in Florida in 1985 by Jacques Fresco. Going to their actual website, we see their mission statement is, the Venus Project is a nonprofit organization that presents a new socioeconomic model utilizing science and technology towards social betterment to achieve a sustainable civilization. All that sounds well and good, but Jesus Christ, that intro video on their website makes them sound like a cult straight out of Black Mirror. The Venus Project is a veritable blueprint for the genesis of a new world civilization. Undesirable behaviors are products of long exposure to detrimental environments. We need to make changes and arrange society very differently. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Regardless, below that is also something that's real. It's a flyer for the Nine Rules of Conduct card, as carried by U.S. soldiers during the Vietnam War. It's basically a card that tells U.S. soldiers to not be dicks. Looking on the desk, we see some documents that are somewhat hard to read here, but looking not too far away, we can find it totally unobstructed and far more legible. Country, Lithuania. Subject, police officer spot UFO, rapid reaction force alerted. Text by Valdas Berbolis, FBI translated. An unidentified flying object spotted near the Lithuanian border on June 25th by two on-duty motor police officers, both of which have very Lithuanian names that I'm not even going to try to pronounce, placed the whole Vilnius police on alert. Vehicle load of soldiers from ARAS, Rapid Reaction Force, sniffer dogs, and police reinforcements immediately arrived on the scene of the emergency. According to the eyewitnesses' accounts, at about 0030 in the morning on the Lithuanian-named road near the Lithuanian-named village, 10 kilometers from the capital. At an altitude of 20 to 30 meters above the ground, they note a specific object hanging and pulsing, alternatively shrinking and expanding. At the same time, they heard what was described as a strange sound like an electric or electronic crackle. Wanting to take a closer look at the UFO, the policemen moved towards it. When they had advanced about 50 meters through the long grass, the police said the sphere moved away, rose higher, and rapidly departed in the direction of Vilnius. The policemen watched the UFO for about half an hour. On their arrival at the scene of the emergency, members of the Civil Defense Department, servicemen from the Special Forces, and commissioners of the Capitol Police carefully studied the area, measured the background radiation, and tape recorded the strange sound which was still heard in the area after the disappearance of the UFO. The sniffer dogs did not discover anything suspicious and behaved quietly, but it was noted that the tall grass around the place over which the sphere had hung has flattened to a radius of 10 meters. Lithuanian scientists have not yet expressed an opinion on the appearance of the UFO near the Lithuanian city. Police commissioner, Lithuanian name, said in a radio interview today that both officers who watched the shining object are psychologically healthy, normal people, not noted for crankiness. Okay, while I immediately want to jump up and down and shout to the heavens that there are aliens and ready or not now, I'm still apprehensive about actually digging into this revelation because, like Francisco Laguna, this could be simply another asset from the Unity Store. We can find this document in multiple locations on this map, so I'm a little apprehensive to say it's canon and not some reused asset. So again, Mr. Ready or Not, or Daddy Void, whatever name you prefer, if you could please clarify these things, that would be phenomenal. Stepping out of Void Shipping Services and into a garage, we can find more cages as well as bags of dog food and bags of calcium nitrate. Moving into a portable nearby, we find a notepad with even more poetry. This time, it's The Lady Shallot by Alfred Tennyson. This one's short, so I'll read it. <clears throat> there she waves by night and day, a magic web of colors gay. She has heard a whisper say, a curse is on her if she stay. To look down to Camelot, she knows not what the curse may be, and so she weaveth steadily. And the little other care hath she, the lady of Shallot. Well, this is a short snippet of a full poem. This whole thing is basically about isolation, or more specifically, an artist's need to be isolated in order to find their true art or some other artistic bullshit along those lines. Regardless, isolation is a key theme in this poem, which is a key theme on this map as well. 
Moving along, we don't really find much out in the next area, however, stepping into warehouse number one for the port of Los Sueños Foreign Trade Zone Company, we start to understand just what's been going on here. Passing more bags of dog food on the shelves, we find a blue shipping container, and when opening it, we are met with a horrific sight. An emaciated woman lays in filth next to a bowl of dog food. These men have been shipping women, sex slaves, and doing so in shipping containers, feeding them nothing but dog food for weeks, if not months, on end, rendering them like this. Further investigation on the first floor doesn't lead us to many more answers, yet we can find a very odd drawing of this pointy guy thing very prominently painted on the wall. While we currently don't know what that pointy guy represents, when we step up to the second floor, we are met with a familiar sight. The same spider from the map, Twisted Nerve. This, along with the same shipping containers found on both maps, and something else we'll be discussing here in a bit, proves my theory that these two maps are linked in some way. Whether it be my theory about the Vietnamese chemical companies supplying meth heads with resources, or something else entirely, we don't know. The one thing we do know for certain is that the spider has its webs here as well. Not too far away, we can find another strange drawing. This time, it looks like a torso with a weird crocodile head or something. Moving to the third floor, we find more junk just laying about. Yellow barrels, tons of cages, and more importantly, that pointy guy thing we saw earlier. This time, colored red, pinning down the skull guy seen on the map Twisted Nerf. I really have no idea if this is symbolizing or referencing anything in particular, but again, this just strengthens the fact that there's something going on here with these guys and perhaps Los Locos or the spider. Finally arriving on the fourth floor, we see what the real purpose of this place is. Entering a very out of place ornate door, we see... what the f***? We see a stage, lights and chairs clearly hinting at an auction taking place, and when investigating further, we can find cages and girls in the back. And, really enough, that's pretty much it. There really isn't anything here other than the environmental storytelling. No papers, voice lines, or anything really. Regardless, let's just move into the theory. So, short theory today. We don't really know if the human traffickers have any large-scale goal. Everything here appears to be fairly straightforward, yet it's the spider's appearance that has me second-guessing some things. We know for a fact there is some secret society operating out of Los Sueños. Gerard began putting some pieces together, but I think we can confidently say his pieces were warped and incomplete. He at least got us thinking about the what if. The connection between the spider on this map and Twisted Nerve has got me thinking. If I'm correct that it's a Breaking Bad situation with the Vietnamese company funneling the supplies needed to Los Locos in order to create more drugs, what if, between those two points, someone intercepts the supplies? Gerard mentioned that the USIA lab assistant broke his silence on some kind of experiment, hinting at an in-universe MKUltra thing. So what if the USIA, or the Spider, or Godhead, or hell, even MLO, intercepted these supplies and tainted them? with the same drugs they used during those USIA experiments. Or maybe they tainted them with something new. Regardless, after whatever they put into those supplies got made into drugs and into the populace, they just sat back and took notes. Basically, Los Locos are indirectly helping this shady organization test out some new kind of experiment on the populace of Los Sueños. The human trafficking occurring has nothing to do with the real goal. Hell, it's probably just a red herring. And the best bit of evidence to suggest something else is occurring here, something involving this secret organization, is the simple fact that the only two other maps referenced in Gerard's house are Twisted Nerve and Hide and Seek. The meth house and this port. Something is happening here, and I do not believe for a second it's as cut and dry as it appears.